Hello fellow students, friends and folks. Welcome everyone. Today I am going to explain to you A.K. Ramanujan's poem, Still Another View of Grace. If this video helps you in any way, do like, share and subscribe. Let's go on. Attipate Krishna Swami Ramanujan was born in 1929 in Mysore to a middle class family. He became an eminent scholar, a philologist and a linguist who knew at least five languages English, Kannada, Tamil, Telugu and Sanskrit. He was a folklorist and his position as a poet is prominent because of his unconventional thinking. His poems present deep, rational, unconventional thoughts about real life and social norms. He assimilated the social norms of both the East and the West in his poetry and questioned the standards by provoking realistic and rational thoughts about the human condition as a whole. The human condition of the East is not discriminated or separated from the human condition of the West as he shows how as a whole human predicament is overlooked and manipulated by the standardized norms of society. He died in 1993 and was awarded the Shahito Academy Award in 1999 posthumously for his collected poems. Let's move on to the text. Still another view of grace. The poem begins with an abrupt expression. I burned and burned. What kind of burning is the poet talking about? A further reading of the next expressions would make it clear that this burning is not literal in its meaning but metaphorical. The word burning generally implies excessive suffering from some painful experience. Also, metaphorically, someone can have a burning anger which can enable him to become a destructive force. Here the poet speaker is talking about burning with anger and sexual desire at the same time. He is burning from desire and he is burning from anger because the desire is not quenched. He wants to be physically intimate with someone but there is something of a barrier that has restrained him up until now. But one day I turned and caught that thought. He continues to look around his life carrying the burden of that burning desire being in a restrained state of mind until one day when he finds and catches a thought. Clearly, this thought here is presented as something that, it, that he lacked, that he required, that would serve a purpose to rescue him from his present restraints. He catches the thought as if it was evading him and he is fortunate enough to get the rare opportunity to get that thought. This means the thought is very unusual in human society and that he has finally got a hold of the thought which is unconventional and so unavailable in general. This thought would break the shackles of conventional thoughts that restrain him from going after what he desires. Now this thought comes to him in a peculiar way that is considered to be disgraceful in society by the screams of her hair. The word scream means a loud calling by someone. Here again the word is used metaphorically. Hair cannot scream literally but the beauty of the hair can attract a person who is especially burning from the natural desire of physical intimacy with another human being. 
he gets the thought by the calling of the beautiful hair and as soon as he catches the thought he is able to break the shackles of the conventional order that he has been enslaved to since the beginning of the journey of life so he moves forward with the thought and says to himself as well as to society beware do not follow a gentleman's morals with that absurd determined air his suddenly found thought has given him the courage to go in the opposite direction of what conventional society expects from him the conventional order first tells us that we need to be gentlemen with some morals to follow here he is warning that to follow that set of morals is not going to give us what we deserve what we want or what we need we follow the socially standardized conventions with such a determined air that the poet calls absurd because he is just going to explain why and how these conventions and morals seem to be hollow and meaningless to him with a sharp sarcastic tone he elaborates that according to those socially standardized morals and customs we are expected to find a priest find any beast in the wind for a husband he will give you a house full of legitimate sons the poet is clearly attacking the social custom and institution of marriage according to the conventions all you need to get into a holy marital relationship are just a priest and a person who can be any beast in the wind we all know how marriages are arranged in a conservative society in this portion of the poem the poet is taking the position of a woman who has to go through marriage arranged in a conservative society where as long as the social customs are maintained nobody seems to look at the vulgar side of the institution of marriage shashi deshpande in her short story the intrusion has precisely portrayed the vulgar aspects of an arranged marriage underneath the so called moral values society doesn't see anything wrong in a woman getting married to a stranger a beast for a husband because society considers marriage as holy the woman is forced to beget a house full of children and nobody asks about her choices or wishes or even consent marital rape is not considered as rape by such a conservative society and thus all the sons and the daughters that get born as unwanted results of the serial attempts to beget sons all the children of a marriage are always legitimate there is no possible immoral or ungentlemanly or vulgar act in a marriage just because it is what the social convention approves of but if two people are interested to get intimate with each other society finds that immoral vulgar and even sinful yet once you are married it is too late for sin even for treason once you have got married society considers the relationship as a sanctified one in which there can be nothing sinful naturally this idea of marital sanctity is hollow and pretentious the masculine urge for sex and feminine need for safety and security are randomly met by the social contract of marriage which is considered to be a sacred bond because it is performed in a religious and ritualistic way and it is legal because the society approves of it so once two people are married society doesn't question whether whatever goes on in that relationship is morally correct or not thus marital rape is not considered as rape treachery or betrayal of trust in any way 
is not taken into account. Everything that goes on is taken into account as fate and everyone has to accept that fate without questioning it or rebelling against it. Because once you are married, there can be no sin according to social convention and sentiment. Thus, sin is sanctioned by society in the name of marital sanctity, which actually shows the sanctimoniousness of such conventional orders. And I have no reason to know your kind, bred Brahmin among singers of shivering hymns, I shudder to the bone at hungers that roam the streets beyond the constable's beat. On the other side of the conventional order, there lies the rebelliousness of the poet speaker who has no reason to know the religion or caste or social or cultural identity of the person standing next to him. In marriages, all these details matter too much and he has just proved how ridiculously sanctimonious the concept of marriage is. The poet Ramanujan was a Brahmin belonging to the highest rank of the social hierarchy according to the Hindu religious order. He says that he was bred and brought up among the shivering customs that strictly orders to follow the rules of the caste system. With the phrase shivering hymns, the poet mocks the hierarchy of the caste system, which is followed by the conservative society in the name of morals and values. Such conventions, when one observes them beginning from one's childhood to one's youth, becomes rooted to the core beliefs of one's existence. That's why, although he is trying to be rebellious with the support of his rational thought, he feels a shudder to the bone for the first time because Breaking free from such orthodox conventions is never easy when it is rooted so deep inside one's being. But ultimately, with all his rational might, he overcomes the invisible barriers in an endeavor to uproot the orthodoxy. He moves forward responding to the hungers that roam the streets beyond the constable's beat. Here. The constable symbolizes the strictness of the social order as well as the legal boundaries. And the hungers that roam the streets points to those who are ready to satisfy someone's sexual desire in exchange of money, which enables them to quench their hungers. So the poet is talking about the profession of prostitution which is generally considered to be a social taboo and in most of the countries around the world it is considered to be illegal. Now we must understand why the poet is talking about prostitution in such a respectful tone. If a man has sexual desires and a woman needs financial support and if both of them agree to make a business out of these needs so that both of them get what they want. This is prostitution and society considers it to be a taboo, a crime, a sin, an immoral or ungentlemanly act. But the same society, as we have already discussed, considers marriage to be a moral, legal, sacred and gentlemanly venture which is actually a social contract between two strangers where no lust is lust anymore, no sin is sin anymore, no torture is torture anymore, and no treason is treason anymore. And most importantly, there is no way out of it, as that is also another social taboo, to get out of one's faithful and holy bond of matrimony. In prostitution, there is no such hypocrisy of sacredness involved. At least it is truthful in its essence. It is clearly an exchange of what two people need and the independence is not shackled by the unbreakable chain of marital oath. So here the woman knows what the man wants and the man knows what the woman requires. They make a deal being truthful to each other and they are not being hypocrites under the disguise of socially accepted gentlemanliness. 
but the poet points out that this kind of relationship between man and woman is not only a social taboo but also in most of the countries illegal whereas marriage which according to him is replete with awful experiences is never under scrutiny and thus is always lawful but there she stood upon the dusty road on a night lit april mind and gave me a look the poet speaker now has concluded his internal debate and he focuses on the public woman who is forever running away from the constable's beat waiting for a customer on a dusty road in the night she stands under the street light and looks as bright as april in the mind of the poet speaker who is looking for someone like her she gives the speaker a look of invitation and commandment scrambled in my father's past her tumbled hair suddenly known as silk in my angry hand i shook a little and took her behind the laws of my land the poet speaker says that all the rules imposed by the social conventions that he was taught get crumbled as he looks at the inviting look of the public woman and he breaks the conventional idea of following a gentleman's morals by following what his burning passion desires the prostitute's disarranged hair suddenly seems to be as smooth as silk in his hand he shakes a little as his passion and his tradition fights against each other inside his mind and he becomes angry because of that inner battle but at last his rational disapproval of the social convention wins as he takes the woman with him avoiding the moral police he takes her knowing that it is against the laws of the land that he lives in the poem thus presents before us an argument that because something is lawful like marriage doesn't mean that it cannot be awful at its core and because something is not lawful like physical intimacy out of wedlock and prostitution doesn't mean that it has to be awful all the way law and ethics are different things we must look at life rationally to understand what is right and what is wrong so this was the line by line explanation of the poem if you like the video if it helps you do like share and subscribe and if you have questions confusions doubts please write in comments i will try to answer thank you